I count it a great honor to be here tonight at this convention. Hallelujah. And I want to start by requesting that we please rise and honor our father and our mother, Reverend Dr. Sam Aboyeji. God bless you, sir, and our precious mother. Let's give them a big God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. I do not take it for granted. And um, in a similar vein, may I request that we honor our fathers um, the seated here, the standing, and all who have come. I do not know all their names, but I honor you in the name of Jesus. Let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The Lord bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm speaking tonight very briefly along the theme of the conference. I found it very interesting when I saw the theme because um, I think very deeply as I prepare my messages and my teachings and um, I take my preparations very seriously and so when I see a topic for discussion I take out time to look at it very carefully and see that which the Spirit of the Living God can help me draw from my study to bless his people so I trust tonight and this is also my request that um, you lend me your rapt attention so that we will learn, we will grow, we will be imparted maximally by the word of God. Like you may have heard me say, God's method has always been his word. His method to lift is his word. His method to restore is his word. His method to redeem is his word. The boundary of God's commitment to the believer is his word. He cannot act within or outside of the jurisdiction of his word. That means when the word of God is about to come, it is important that we pay attention to receive because in receiving the word, we also receive the keys to our lifting, our breakthroughs, our deliverances, and indeed rest on every side. But can I start tonight by prophesying over someone that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, everything that has stopped you from enjoying rest round about, may it give way finally this night. May it give way finally this night. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, that everything that will not allow you experience the fullness of the glory of God I decree and declare standing upon the grace on this altar may it give way once and for all in the name of Jesus Christ is it all right if we pray for just one minute please say after me father one more time say father tonight I receive grace to hear I receive grace to understand. I receive grace to obey. Go ahead and pray. Grace to hear. Grace to understand. Grace to obey. Someone is praying. Tonight we receive grace. Grace to hear. But beyond hearing, grace to understand. And beyond understanding, the grace to obey. The grace to obey. The grace to obey. For in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Can we have a believing amen? Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay and worship in you you believe 
to the word the Bible tells us in Psalm 34 and verse 19 Psalm 34 and verse 19 the Bible gives us a very interesting expression I trust that the media will work with us thank you it says many are the afflictions of the righteous many are the afflictions of of the righteous but the Bible there leaves us with an assurance that the Lord delivered them from how many all many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered him from them all so very clearly we see from this scripture that the reality of troubles I wrote here the reality of calamities and despair is not new to our world our world is full of events and episodes of calamities episodes of despair and all kinds of troubles in fact i think it was in john chapter 16 and verse 33 jesus himself had this to say he said in this world you will have many troubles jesus is speaking now but he says be of good cheer i have overcome the world that in this world this is a statement coming from the lips of the master himself that in this world in this life you will have many troubles but he leaves you with an assurance to be of good cheer and he says i have overcome the world so it is not unusual for men to be troubled the bible is full of people you see one of the things i love about scripture is that it does not hide any dimension of life the Bible captures victories. The Bible captures defeat. The Bible captures triumph. The Bible captures sadness. The Bible captures rejoicing. All captured within this Bible to give you a very balanced perspective of the character of God and the reality of life. Are we together? So it is true that troubles and calamities, despair, and moments of unease are not new to our world all you have to do is to be alive for a sufficient period of time and you will be forced to attest to the fact that unassisted by God your lot is almost that of calamity by default in fact here's how the Bible puts it that the whole world lieth in wickedness and for that reason alone everyone is a potential candidate for pain calamity despair of any sort except you bail yourself out through knowledge and understanding are we following tonight people have had to go through all kinds of troubles in their lives troubles for instance in the area of health troubles in the area of finances troubles in the area of marriage and relationships trouble in the area of career and their destiny pursuits our world is full of people if i ask everyone here right now submit a prayer request so that we pray upon everything you are writing on that request is some usually something you want to get out of your life or something you want to bring into your life the fact that you have something to write is an attestation to the fact that almost everyone has something he's trusting God to take out of his life or something he's trusting God to bring into his life 
if you're with me shout a loud amen. amen people have gone through issues in their lives in the area of their spiritual lives the area of their health area of their finances their marriages their relationships i'll give you a few examples of men and women who went through several kinds of troubles in the bible i will just give you the scriptures we're not going to read them for sake of time number one is a man abraham you would think because abraham was a patriarch of faith he would be immune from trouble abraham went through all kinds of infertility problems you find that from genesis 15 one to three the bible does not hide the fact that even though abraham a great man a friend of god and yet the bible lets us know that that man went through seasons over 25 years of barrenness alongside his wife to a point that he became frustrated he was given a recommendation that god will raise seed for him through another from his house abraham how about the nation of israel in egypt a whole nation can go through seasons of calamity and pain we find that in exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 to 9 when god was speaking exodus 3 7 to 9 when god was speaking with moses in the burning bush it was god himself who said that he had heard the cry of his people by reason of their taskmasters and that they he was aware of their sorrows god himself was saying that exodus 3 7 to 9 he was now charging moses giving him the mandate of a deliverer but god himself acknowledged the fact that his people his covenant people had gone through several years and decades of pain by reason of their taskmasters can i give you a third example how about the famine in samaria a whole nation the famine in samaria you find that in second kings chapter 6 25 to 31 second kings chapter 6 25 to 31 the bible tells us that there was such a grievous famine in samaria that food was so scarce women had to eat their children to survive hallelujah i'm not sure such a dimension of famine has happened in a world that i'm aware of that a mother would look at the child and rather than seeing a child that came from her she's looking at a means for survival hallelujah the famine in samaria can i give you number four in ruth chapter one from verse one and six ruth chapter one from verse one and six the bible gives us a very interesting rendition about two strange personalities number one the woman called naomi and then her daughters-in-law ruth and Opha. the bible says that all of them i don't know what kind of spirit came upon that family they strangely were losing all the men in their lives i pray for someone every pattern you have seen around your life and your family that is inconsistent with the speakings of god by the power of the blood it will let you go this night it will let you go this night in the name of jesus christ i just thought to comment on this so she lost her husband naomi ruth lost her husband and her sons Orpah lost her husband and her sons do you know the same kind of spirit was at work in a woman in the new testament called the widow of nain all the men in her life everyone who had the potential to support her was taken out of her life hallelujah these were women in great sorrow they had lost their systems for security and support many are the afflictions of the righteous can i give you one more in second kings chapter 5 and verse 1 i would like to read that the bible talks of a very valiant man a warrior in fact called naaman the bible calls him the captain of the host of the king of syria look at the kind of credential that was credited to this man that he was a great man with his master he was an honorable man 
and that by reason of his intelligence and dexterity the lord had given deliverance unto syria and he was a mighty man in battle and you would think with those kinds of credentials he would escape trouble the bible says but in spite of all those great testimonies but he was a leper there was something in his life that was a cause for concern hallelujah now the bible tells us furthermore in luke chapter 8 i found this very interesting 41 to 45 i hope we're still together luke chapter 8 from verse 41 to 40 to 45 let me read that story i want to draw out something from it this is a story that doubles as that of Jarius's daughter and then the woman with the issue of blood. So the Bible says, And behold, there came a man named Jarius, and he was a ruler in the synagogue, the Bible says, and that he fell at the feet of Jesus and asked him to come into his house. Next verse, please. Reading to 45. The Bible says, For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age and she was lying there dying and the bible says when he came he didn't have a chance to meet jesus easily because the people thronged him next verse then the bible says whilst he was on his way jesus now wanted to honor the request to get to his house he stumbled across another woman with no name named by her pain named by her tragedy named by her calamity this woman most likely had a name but her calamity so swallowed her it replaced her name she was simply called the woman with the issue of blood 12 years the bible says she had spent all her living on physicians neither could she be healed of any the Bible says that she came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood ceased. Now, the point is that the daughter of Jarius was 12 years old, the one who was dying. And this woman was 12 years old in a calamity, meaning the day that young girl was born, that was when this woman's trouble also started. Both 12 years. A 12 year old girl about to lose her life a 12 year old woman and if you were asked to which one would be better to heal first both of them were sympathetic to their pain would you ignore a woman who had gone through 12 years of pain but would you ignore a little girl who has potential to live a great life trouble for you calamities for you are we still together The Bible makes a very interesting statement in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. Please give it to us. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 8. I usually would like us to read together. I hope we can. Otherwise, I'll just read alone. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 8. Please media help us. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. If you can see it, please, I request that we read together. Ready? One to go we are troubled on every side please hold on hold on hold on hold on this is a very interesting statement it is one thing to be troubled in your health but other areas will be doing well it is one thing to be troubled spiritually but perhaps financially you are doing well the bible tells us that it is even possible to be troubled on every side you know what that means that there can be a problem in your finances at the same time a problem in your spiritual life at the same time a problem with your children in your marriage that such possibility exists in our world we are troubled not just dimensionally but on every side he said yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair so men can be so troubled it is not just that men can find rest on every side they can also be troubled on every side i have studied my bible by the grace of god and in my study the clearest example the individual that personifies this scripture in my opinion is the man job 
Job becomes for us a theological lesson a description of a man who was troubled on every side for reference please write Job chapter 1 13 to 22 Job chapter 1 13 to 22 and then Job chapter 2 7 to 9 for time's sake I'm not going to read it I'll just um, just recite for you the story so here is a man the Bible says who was the richest man within the East in the then world and the Bible says he was a man who feared God and eschewed evil he had everything what you will want to call rest on every side wealth was there children assets a great name but then the Bible tells us that a series of events happened within the heavens and began to manifest back to back all within the space of one day in one day ladies and gentlemen the man Job lost his children lost his assets lost his reputation lost everything and then the Bible makes a very profound statement that when the last person came to break the sad news Job bowed himself to the ground and worshipped not bowed himself to the ground to curse God not bowed himself to the ground in despair the Bible says he bowed himself to the ground and worshipped hallelujah and then as though that would be enough there were only three things that were left after the first tragedy struck in Job's life number one was his wife number two was his relationship with God and number three was his health these were the only three things that survived the first attack and then a series of events in chapter 2 would happen again and the devil is given liberty to now strike his health Job's health was so was so heat that the Bible says that men would look at him and just pass he became a man who was left for dead troubled on every side and the only thing Job had left was his wife and his God but then when I study the book of Job I am encouraged by just one profound statement and you find that in Job chapter 42 and verse 10 and may that be a prophecy for someone tonight in the name of Jesus please give it to us and the Lord turned the captivity of Job my goodness there is a God that can turn the captivity of men did you hear what I said that there is a God in heaven not in the earth there is a God that sits in heaven and that he sustains within his power the ability to turn the captivity of men did you not read in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion he said we were like them that dream it will be for someone tonight like a dream the way my God will turn around your life I say it by prophecy it will do for someone like you are dreaming the way doors will open the way God will settle you the way God will give you peace the way my God will arise to push back every force that has mocked your life please be seated So the Bible tells us that men, all men, can be troubled not just on some sides, not just in certain areas, but that men can be troubled on every side. And it is very possible that someone came for this convention in the midst of the dance, in the midst of the screams, in the midst of the shout, you are only praying for grace to survive because perhaps this year has been maybe your worst experience yet now I want you to please pay attention I just thought to borrow from my notes and explain to us why believers go through tragedies I just want to list it for you two weeks ago I did a teaching back at home on deliverance over calamities and I just thought to incorporate that in my notes I thought it was very important before we begin to talk about entering rest 
it's important we have a very proper foundation as to why believers go through tragedies go through calamities and go through unfavorable seasons there is a reason there are there is an explanation to pain there is an explanation to calamity and tragedy i will list for you not necessarily having to explain them and i pray in the name of jesus christ that what you are about to hear will contribute to your confidence because sometimes beyond pushing men to enter the rest it's important that we diagnose the condition properly there are people who no matter what kind of prayer you pray for they will still go back into their pain because there are certain fundamental mistakes that they continue to make can we examine this for a minute number one the first reason according to scripture why people go through tragedies losses calamities is lack of discernment please write the absence of discernment will always lead an individual into a a circle of calamities lack of discernment lack of discernment lack of discernment hallelujah lack of discernment most people cannot discern i'm reminded about the story in acts chapter 12 when you read in the book of acts chapter 12 the bible says that herod made up his mind to vex certain jews and in doing so john i mean james was held and he was beheaded and when james was beheaded the bible says that it, the herod saw that it pleased the jews and now he held peter proposing that after the passover he would also destroy peter but the bible says in verse 5 that prayers was made by the church are we together without ceasing for him and then the bible says the moment the church began to pray i was not there but i can draw out i can infer their prayer content lord bring peter out of the prison bring him out of the prison he must not die and the bible says in response to their prayer an angel comes to the prison and brings deliverance unto peter now watch this then the bible tells us that peter was led out and the gates began to open now he was given the liberty and when you read from verse 11 forward the bible says peter came to the very house when he came to the house where the prayer was happening for his deliverance he knocked the door and said this is the answer to your prayer one young girl opened the door and saw him and said no it must be his angel she closed the door and they kept praying lord deliver peter lack of discernment how do you pray for something and then the answer comes and you cannot know hallelujah lack of discernment number two the second reason why people experience losses pain tragedies calamities i wrote here is carelessness carelessness the second reason carelessness hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 carelessness carelessness the bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation if you are careless and you take for granted how shall we escape i wish i had the time to share with you a very interesting story under this point it is found in the book of judges chapter 11 30 to 35 i prayed for my own self that god would help me to be free from carelessness when i read this scripture a very interesting scripture about a warrior called jephthah jephthah was one of the mighty men he was a warrior and this man on his own god did not ask him to make a covenant he got up you can see a graphic representation of carelessness he said oh god if you will deliver the children of ammon to my hands here is my promise the first thing that opens my door as i return back i will give to you sounds like spirituality but that is carelessness and truly he 
he had great victory and the bible says when he was returning home watch this his daughter opened the door the first person he would see was his daughter she had prepared instruments of music you find that in verse 34 this young girl was out to to celebrate her father's return yet the man had carelessly made a statement that the first thing that comes out of his door he will sacrifice it there are many people today who have brought self-inflicted curses upon themselves because of carelessness in the name of jesus i'm praying for someone either through careless speaking either through careless associations whatever calamity you may have brought upon yourself may the god of mercy tonight bail you out may the god of mercy tonight bail you out in the name of jesus christ number three very quickly why do men go through tragedies and pain calamities and seasons of distress ignorance of the laws of the kingdom ignorance ignorance of the laws of the kingdom ignorance of the laws of life and destiny hallelujah an intelligent god will not design a system like this and allow men to freelance their way through it there is an exact formula for living profitably upon the earth did you hear what i said there is an exact formula for profitable living there is also an exact formula for living a defeated life you don't just live a defeated life to live a defeated life you walk in keeping with certain principles and to live a victorious life you also walk in keeping with certain principles samuel chapter 2 12 to 17 then we also go to first samuel chapter 4 the bible lets us know that hophni and phinehas based on the principle they were supposed to use the fork and to bring out a portion of meat and whatever portion it brought was theirs but they decided to start bringing choice portions for themselves and they violated due process many people today have abused anointings abuse opportunities abuse relationships are we together you may have heard people in our world say i know this man we used to be friends i know this woman we used to be classmates the question is what changed usually abuse dishonor will always close any door abuse of privileges abuse of opportunities children have abused certain privileges that their parents created for them parents have abused certain privileges that they had with all due respect even men and women of god have abused privileges in the corporate world people have abused privileges abuse and misuse will always lead to tragedy a wise man now of blessed memory dr miles munro would say when the purpose of a thing is not known he says abuse of it is inevitable the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use every time a thing is taken out of its jurisdiction of purpose it becomes abuse the fourth reason why people go through tragedies let me quickly run through the remaining two number five the fifth reason why people go through calamities and pain and tragedies is as a result of demonic attacks demonic attacks you cannot rule satan out there are times that you do everything right but just because there is an adversary that is determined to thwart the purposes of god in your life demonic attacks john chapter 10 and verse 10 jesus himself was teaching and here's what he had to say the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy he says but i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly jesus called satan a thief in first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 
here's what Paul Peter now was admonishing us to do he says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion he walketh about he walks about Abel Kuta he walks about Lagos he walks about Kaduna Kano he walks about Europe he walks about America he walks about to and fro the entire earth seeking whom he may devour the diligence of Satan can be so inspiring the Bible tells us that when he was probed by God he said from whence have you come he said from walking to and throw the earth that means provided you are in the earth one day the possibility for meeting him or his representatives is 100 percent one day he will come around you even jesus said satan cometh to me satan cometh to me hallelujah what does it mean to have rest i have three expressions here that I believe capture the idea of rest. Is God speaking to someone already? Number one, to have rest means to have security. To have rest means to have security. Any and all kinds of security. The moment it's time for you to sleep, the first thing you do is to lock up your doors am i right on that you lock your car you lock the main door you switch off the light and you are going to rest so rest is connected to security all kinds of security spiritual security financial security relational security rest means security number two rest means freedom from or dominion over troubles and fears I'll take it again rest means freedom from or dominion over freedom from or dominion over troubles and fears you are said to be in a position of rest when you have freedom from exempted from or dominion over troubles and fears number three as simple as this would sound it is my most it is the clearest explanation of rest for me rest in one word is peace rest in one word is peace they are so related that in our world we have used both words as a parting expression for people who leave the earth here's what we say rest in not rest in wisdom not rest in wealth not rest in a well-furnished grave the only expression we can give to such a man that describes our idea of rest is peace that means in all you're getting if it is minus peace you have not found rest if you have progress without peace you have not entered rest are we learning tonight the question tonight as i seek to tie up my teaching is that can a believer can the believer in christ experience rest round about is that possible is there such a possibility in the economy of god that a believer can be so fortified that the same way a believer is plagued with trouble on every side can a believer actually have rest on all sides the answer is yes Genesis 24 and verse 1 let me request when it is projected that we shout that scripture together in unison ready one two read please and Abraham was old and well stricken in age uh-huh and the lord had blessed abraham in all things someone say all things all things means your spiritual life say all things your finances your home your children here 
is a man who represents a portrait of God's idea of a blessed man and the Bible says in spite of the tragedies and the calamities that he met somewhere in his life it was just a page in his life that at the end of Abraham's life he was old and well stricken in age yes it is true that he was once without child but not forever yes it is true that he was once an idol worshiper from all of the Chaldeans but it was not forever let me prophesy to someone whatever negative name may be around your life it is only a page of your destiny I speak to you in the name of Jesus that my God is rewriting your story my God is rewriting your story where you have been called barren barren is not the name you will have forever failure is not the name you will have forever a victim is not the name you will have forever the oppressed is not the name you will have forever hallelujah Jacob got to a point in his life where he was tired of an old name called a cheat and a supplanter and he held on to God and he said I will not let you go until you bless me and in blessing him his name was changed how about the man called Jabez the Bible says the mother named him after her pain Jabez got angry and he cried to the God of heaven oh that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast when it's time to pray tonight someone needs to be angry with your current situation and say Lord I did not come here tonight for negotiation I must step in to the realm of rest on every side in the name of Jesus Christ so can the believer in Christ experience rest on every side the answer is yes in spite of the economic situation yes sir in spite of the onslaught of demonic forces around families and territories yes sir in spite of your delay in knowing god yes sir in spite of the fact that it looks like it's not easy to get jobs again yes sir in spite of the fact that it looks like there is such decadence that is bedeviling our world yes sir the believer in christ not everyone the believer in christ has a superior advantage and that in the presence of knowledge you can step into rest on every side what then are the keys to entering rest there are keys to entering rest in this kingdom the saints excel by the use of keys a key stands for access there is the key to the kingdom the key to the kingdom is Jesus there are not many keys there is only one key to the kingdom but when you are in the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom the principles and the mysteries by which the saints reign hallelujah The Bible says they know not neither will they understand Psalm 82 and verse 5 they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says I have said ye are gods and all of you not some of you not men of God not businessmen not elders not children all of you are children of the Most High verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes Hosea began to lament in chapter 4 and verse 6. He said, speaking by the Spirit, my people are destroyed. Listen carefully, please. My people, that includes preachers. My people, that includes businessmen. My people, that includes people from all the six geopolitical zones captured in this nation and across the nations of the earth. My people. And yet he says they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge for the lack of knowledge please lend me your attention for the next few minutes that we have haven't established the fact that calamity 
is the potential lot of all men calamities tragedies pains discomfort is the potential lot of all men by default but that there is a system in Christ that men and women can bail themselves out of tragedies and calamities and master the art of exerting dominion and by that they establish practically in and through their lives that a man can have rest on every side key number one what is the first key for anyone whether following here this beautiful campground or following by way of television from any nation at all following online what is my first key if i want to step into the realm of rest round about are you ready the decision to be spiritually minded the first key non-negotiable key for anyone who desires to walk in the experience of rest roundabout rest on every side is to be spiritually minded Romans 8 6 mm. Romans 8 6 Paul was speaking and he said to be carnally minded is already death death in its entirety and then he says but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace spiritually minded spirituality involves a number of many experiences and dimensions the chiefest of them being your encounter with the Lord Jesus you may want to write this under being spiritually minded true spirituality starts not just with your coming to church not just with your listening to a man of God not just with your listening to a message true spirituality starts with your encounter with the Lord Jesus are we still learning still examining the first key that to find rest round about you must be spiritually minded and that the pathway to becoming spiritually minded is number one to have an encounter with Jesus Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 I love Jesus here's what he has to say Matthew 11 28 can we read it together one to read please come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden what's the reward I will give you rest not just life I will give your family rest I will give your ministry rest I will give your business rest I will give your children rest I will give your health rest but the key is come unto me come unto me the Bible tells us the story of a young boy called the prodigal son that boy had his share of the inheritance and went to live a riotous life and when he had so declined to a point that he was the epitome of calamity and failure the Bible says he got up one day and said to himself how many hired servants as my father and I am here feeding with the swine I like the boy he said I will arise he didn't say my father will come and meet me there the father never come never came to meet him in the place of decadence I will arise and I will go to my father and when I see my father I will say unto him father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves as soon as he got up and began to move the father also left his house and began to move they met somewhere at the point of his decision an encounter with Jesus there are many people who want to receive from God but they do not desire to be spiritual with all due respect many politicians many businessmen captains of industry parents young people especially they do not desire to have an encounter with jesus but they want the fruits of encounter there are certain things that cannot be received through a back door jesus said this about himself i am the way not a way the way 
there is a way that seemeth right unto a man the bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death but here's jesus speaking he says i am the way i am the truth i am the life he says no man cometh to the father except through me an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you are already on your way to being secure proverbs 18 10 proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10 very powerful and profound rendition it says the name of the lord is a strong tower hallelujah the righteous runs into it and they are saved the name of the lord the name of the lord not the name of a man the name of the lord is a strong tower there is no house on earth that you can hide to in away from demons you can hide away from armed robbers the military can protect you against physical forces but they may not be able to protect you against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness age-long causes that are determined to reduce you to a place of shame but my bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run into it and be sure that what killed my father would not kill me again what killed my mother would not kill me again what destroyed people from my lineage would not i can redefine my possibilities when i run to jesus hallelujah you believe that oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning i have learned to walk in your ways step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you i will seek you in the morning i have learned to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days listen ladies and gentlemen hear me the, this business of jesus christ is beyond church this issue of jesus christ is beyond the pretense and the hypocrisy the form of godliness this issue of jesus must be a genuine encounter there are many things you cannot fake one of it is a solid genuine encounter with the lord jesus christ with all due respect there are many people in church who have not met him there are many people in ministry who have not met him there are many people serving at various levels in ministries and christian organizations who are working for god but not with him please listen please listen while i watch several people dancing to the praise and worship powerfully among the many things that moved in my spirit was oh god i pray and hope that this dance is to a god they know i pray and hope that this sweating and rejoicing is to a god you know because there were men in a place called athens who were doing obeisance to an unknown god there are many people giving to an unknown God, singing to an unknown God, preaching for an unknown God, moving from place to place, wearing t-shirts, carrying the name of a God they do not know. 
you want rest roundabout there are things that men cannot give rest is not found in a bank you don't find rest in the university there is no cause called rest there is no chef who can cook a meal called rest no it does not exist in the world of men rest only resides with the ancient of days I will give you rest I will give you rest now watch this we are discussing being spiritually minded ladies and gentlemen hear me at the end of my discourse I'm going to be making an altar call and I believe there are people here you've been around the things of God for a long time you perhaps may have had an opportunity to serve in various capacities in church that does not equal to an encounter with God having a Christian name coming from a Christian family as advantageous as these are they do not in themselves translate to salvation you must encounter the God of the Bible the God of the Bible hallelujah you are my God you are my God how can I call on your name and end up in shame How can I sing a song before you and then bow down before a man? No way, no way, because you are my God. You are my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd rather be a failure with God than to succeed without him and when i say god i'm talking about jesus christ the son of the living god because god in our world today means anything there are people god means themselves there are others god means their bank accounts there are others god means they have several qualifications as important as that is my bible says trust in the lord with all your heart proverbs 3 and verse 5 he says lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the lord and depart turn away from evil except the lord builds a house my bible says they labor in vain that will build it except the lord watches over a city said the watchmen watch it but in vain that it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow the psalmist said how many are they that rise up against me some three many are they that say where is your help but he says thou O lord thou O lord thou O lord you are a shield for me he calls him my glory and the lifter up of my head the bible says they looked on to him and their faces were lightened you not look up to him and be in shame when the serpents came to oppress the nation of Israel they had an opportunity to look two directions the brazen serpent representing the cross or the one that was coming to them ladies and gentlemen behind the exploits and the rest of men that we admire in our world today men and women in ministry champions in the kingdom in business in family behind all the excellence the admirable results is a passion for god i've had the honor and the opportunity to meet people whose lives are an epitome of excellence behind all of that paraphernalia when you come to them you find out that their real secret is not the intellect their real secret is not the banking skill their real secret is their love and their passion for Jesus hallelujah in addition to having an encounter with Jesus you want to become spiritually minded your prayer altar must be on fire we are still discussing point one 
this is what it takes to be spiritually minded number one to have an encounter with the son of the living god number two your prayer life it is the apostolic model that was left with the church you want to be spiritual it is not without a healthy prayer life acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer acts chapter 6 and verse 4 it says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word luke chapter 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 he says pray without ceasing james chapter 5 and verse 13 is any man afflicted he says let him pray mark 11 and verse 24 he says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have it ladies and gentlemen the men who will command exploits in their world and find rest tame life like an animal are men and women who understand the mysteries of the altar we must obtain grace to pray we must obtain grace to pray prayer is not for men of God it's not for pastors and apostles and evangelists please listen to me dear parents and the aged Anna the prophetess was old she still prayed young men Jesus prayed you must pray we must revive prayer as a culture with understanding a generation that does not pray will be a weak generation that will never see the power of God I tell you sincerely and I'm not just talking of need driven prayer give me give me give me I'm talking of men who build capacity within the spirit Peter sent and a desire to sift you like wheat he says but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren show me a man of God who prays I show you a victor one who will have rest on every side show me a businessman who prays show me a mother who prays no matter how stubborn that child is let the mother keep praying one day fire from heaven will locate that child no matter where he is I tell you most people do not know the power in prayer go and read church history and see people who shifted the spiritual climate over nations not with the power of prayer prayer with understanding can change things yes it can Elijah was a man of like passion the Bible says yet he prayed say in the name of Jesus one more time in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to pray if you came here and your prayer life has gone down or perhaps until now you have believed that anyone who is serious in the prayer life must be someone who is getting into ministry please give yourself a renewed orientation prayer is an instrument for end time survival you cannot escape the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilences the destruction that wastes in noonday pray for me pray for me is wonderful but you must learn to fan the ambers the flames on your own altar hear me young people i hate to be a bearer of bad news but let me make an honest admission the days today are very different from the days of our parents the level of honesty has changed the level of sincerity has changed you will have to use the weapon of prayer to create your own reality otherwise get set to join a long queue that may never move are we together yes sir pray oh gentlemen pray 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 apostle but i don't have a job yet good news pray use that time to pray while you are waiting the bible says watch and pray there is a devil who has vowed that you will not rise 
he says say unto God how terrible art thou in thy work Psalm 66 and verse 3 through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you you want to tame life you must master the art of prayer mommy don't watch your children become arm robbers and hooligans and say it's just the times it's their days don't let them send you to the grave no you may not have the strength to fight them because they are now bigger than you but you can bring them to their knees through prayer father i will not my womb will not give birth to an arm robber no my womb will not give birth to a prostitute i cannot give birth to a child that will be the reason for me to die early hallelujah when ministry is not working man of god pray don't complain there is no reward for complaining pray pray someone looks at you in the place of work and just says i hate you you are supposed to be the next director but i hate you you are not my tribe you are not this arguing there will only be you will be recording calamity upon calamity leave them in peace go back to the central control room of the universe and begin to pray certain things do you believe what you're hearing then in addition to prayer you must be sound in scripture now let me submit to you haven't encouraged you to pray prayer in ignorance is just wasting your energy what gives power to prayer is the word compliancy of your prayer this we have a generation of prayerful people but most people pray amiss what gives power to your prayer is its word compliancy beyond the sound of your voice beyond your sweating and rolling from left to right if there is no word compliancy to your prayer you simply dissipated energy in futility are we together you must be sound in scripture acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now brethren i commend you unto god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up it says and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified john 1 1 to 3 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the bible says the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 says all things were made by him the word all things including your tomorrow made by the word and without him was not anything made that was made the boundary of god's commitment to the believer is his word God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the boundary of his word. Please listen, beloved people of God. God only does what he says, not what you want. If what you want is consistent with what he says, then it will be done. God never, never does anything that is outside of what he has said. Please give us Genesis 21 and verse 1. I want us to shout it. Is God helping someone? spiritually minded we're discussing the keys now because rest round about is not a gift jesus said i will give you rest the word give you there does not mean you will not do anything and you will just have it because you will be learning that paul was giving perspective to our understanding of rest he said there remained a rest for the people of god genesis 21 and verse 1 you see that it's good to come to church the church of the lord jesus christ is the cheapest institution that sponsors transformation you don't have to write jam there is no age restriction hallelujah all other institutions have quotas once the quota is full sorry for you but the church all you need to do is leave your house and come and sit down you are not paying school fees your school fees is your humility and your meekness and your diligence this is important so that government will know that the church is not a nuisance to, to, to civilization. The church is an active part of the transforming force of society. It is true. How did I get here? Genesis 21 verse 1 please. Let's read it together. Ready? One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah 
as he has said and the Lord did unto Sarah he did not visit Sarah as she wanted no the visitation was not based on a need it was based on his word the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he has said if you cannot find what God has said you will never find what he can do it is what he has said that he will do show me what God has said and I show you what he can do show me what God has said and I show you what he will do did God say he will heal you then I show you that his power can heal you did God say he will lift you up then I show you that no power can keep you down did God say he can give you rest round about where is that spirit that will want to tie you when God has said hallelujah Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 the first three words and God said and God said and God said when you find what God has said then you find what his power can do the limit of God's power is where his word stops and since his word is unlimited it is true that his power is unlimited are we learning be spiritually minded let me give you the last I have a few minutes I, and I intend to take a part of it so that we'll pray so the decision to be spiritually minded becomes for us the first key to experiencing rest on every side and I'm now explaining to you the implication of being spiritually minded that number one it necessitates an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God number two that your prayer life has to be alive and robust number three your spiritual understanding needs to be heightened because according to Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says you will only arise and you will shine if and when your light comes longevity of your stay does not equal to victory the man was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years time did not change his situation the day the light of the world came to him he was ready to rise the Bible says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light is God speaking to us let me challenge you therefore by the mercies of God that in the course of this convention go and find relevant materials materials that speak to the various issues of concern whether electronically or by way of print it is your responsibility under God to pursue truth the Bible says buy the truth there are certain currencies we use to buy the truth number one hunger number two meekness number three passion these are the currencies that we use to buy the truth and the Bible says if you do find the truth he says sell it not hallelujah is someone learning many believers work based on superstitious ideas and with all due respect it is this bankruptcy of light that has impoverished us as a people and as a continent we have all kinds of wise sayings that are not based on scripture one day you go better no sir no sir no sir you define your lot by light are we together amplified isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life when i found out that the responsibility of understanding was mine i vowed before god that there will be no excuse i hate ignorance with passion and i am ever open to know the areas where i am ignorant in how do you know your areas of ignorance the areas where darkness thrives the area where pain exists the area where suffering and pain perpetually remains is the area of darkness search for the relevant materials if it's your finances don't keep quiet and say my uncle has the power to lift me but is not attending to me no the word responsible comes from the word responsive responsible people are people of action 
they don't sit down and wait for things to happen why is my finance like this why am i always fighting with my husband this marriage is not a curse why are my children stubborn not obeying me why does everybody hate me it is not unusual to be hated but if everybody hates you something is wrong with you because even satan is not everybody that hates him hallelujah there are people who love him so if everybody around you hates you it's not a, it's not it's not just a spiritual problem you are perpetually violating something somebody should like you enough and all you need is for one person and if that person is king ahasuerus you become the queen immediately it didn't matter how many people hated esther the right person who needed to love her made her queen it didn't matter how many people hated nehemiah when the king loved him as a cup bearer he got favor who hates you does not matter but who likes you in this kingdom i'm praying for someone the grace that must rest upon you and cause men to find favor with men in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you now hallelujah i think i'll give one more then we'll pray I'll finish up the remaining tomorrow. Is that a good deal? So I've given you number one, the decision to be spiritually minded. Let's do number two. What is the second key to experiencing rest on every side? You must live by faith. You must live by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. You also find that in Hebrews 10 and verse 38, the just shall live by faith. Four times in scripture, the Bible repeats it almost verbatim, that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, that includes Joshua Selman, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And he says, this is the victory that overcometh the world. Help me, even our faith. The man who has faith is an overcomer indeed. And in one word, ladies and gentlemen, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience no matter your definition of faith if it does not capture obedience you did not define it well let me give you two definitions for faith if you don't mind number one faith is the confidence you have the depth of conviction that you have about God and the integrity of his word number one faith is defined as your confidence your conviction about God and the integrity of his word the confidence and the conviction you have about God and the integrity of his word second definition please faith is the name given to the action of obedience you take faith is the name given to the action of obedience you take as proof that you believe faith is the name given to the action of obedience you take as proof that you believe the proof of hearing is accurate response if you have heard me i know you have heard me because you will respond accordingly are we together faith is defined is the name given to the action that you take as proof that you believe God if it be thou bid me come and he said come most believers do not know how to live by faith faith is beyond confessing the word as important as that is faith is beyond agreeing with God as important as that is those are just various equations that ultimately lead to faith the foundation for Bible faith is an awareness of the promises of God 
the bible essentially is a concise capture of promises principles and prophecies you may want to write that down that every time you open your bible you are relating with three realms of realities number one promises a definition of god's commitment to you scattered from genesis to revelation promises number two principles the modus operandi of the kingdom teaches you how to live a victorious life then number three prophecies that give perspective and definition to the events present and the events past and events that are yet to happen so every time you lay hold on god's promises then you obtain grace to obey until you know the demands to commit god and then obey them you are not walking by faith let me repeat myself again for your understanding until you know the demands connected to every result the the word of god and god is a compendium of infinite possibilities but for every result you desire in the kingdom healing breakthrough prosperity there is a demand there is always what god says to do to commit him when you find it and you obtain grace to walk in keeping with that instruction then you are walking by faith i submit to you therefore that on the strength of this definition many believers are not walking by faith they are walking on sincere assumptions they are walking on hope they are speaking lord i believe you but they are not walking by faith if i ask one of our wonderful protocol people here if i ask them to come and say collect my bible whoever comes to collect my bible i tell them there is a hundred dollar bill inside that's your reward for obedience if the gentleman there starts jumping and says i'm coming believe me joshua selman i trust you i know you are not a liar is it not you the other day you gave all that talk does not you will never get it as wonderful as that is the instruction is whoever can take the risk and come someone will begin to speak from 1999 till today nothing happens and another person in one day will get up and obey the one who obeys is the one who receives not the one who knows the bible says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass the bible says if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to do and to observe 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 that is the character of faith to do and to observe all that i command you this day the reward the lord your god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings will come upon you and will overtake you you hearken to the voice of the lord then you observe and you do in the name of jesus the grace to do may it be released upon you the first miracle that was performed by jesus was the turning of water to wine in cana of galilee you find that in john chapter 2 the bible lets us know that it was a feast just like this and wine had finished and shame was already imminent and the bible tells us that the disciples came and met mary the mother of jesus she takes them to jesus and says jesus says no no it's not yet my time and she gives them a very profound instruction in verse 5 she says whatever he says to do do it whatever he says to do not think it not wish it not assume it do it the moment doing came the willingness to do came jesus gave an instruction and when you read verse 10 and 11 the bible tells us this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee verse 11 and manifested his glory and the disciples believed on him rest roundabout you now see that it's not just a gift it is a reward for walking in keeping with certain principles let me recap one last time and we pray that the key to exerting dominion over situations and circumstances commanding your portion of rest on every side is number one
to be spiritually minded that starts with your encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ your salvation of experience then it translates to the health of your prayer life the health of your word study extends to other spiritual exercises fasting and so on and so forth and then number two you must learn to live by faith to live by faith means to live by the word of God for Jesus himself said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God that means a believer lives on two things bread and scriptural instructions if you live on bread alone you will be weary your bread will be spent it is bread and scriptural instructions hallelujah we're going to pray tonight I'll stop here and then we'll continue tomorrow there are two other points that I want to show you but allow me in the next three or two minutes I'm going to request that we arise to pray and then I will speak over our lives tonight and then we wrap it for my session have you been blessed tonight please rise up on your feet this is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me tonight. I'm desperate for. ahead and begin to talk to the Lord passionately from your heart father I desire rest rest round about someone is praying mention the very the different areas in your life where you are trusting him for rest Someone is praying, rest in my family, rest in my health. This fibroid, this cancer, this prostrate condition, this bone condition, this devourer eating into my health. I desire rest round about. Spiritual rest.
worthy to be glorified you are worthy almighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord in and through my life you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy almighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord hallelujah are you praying now you are going to ask the Lord for a fresh passion for him a fresh passion for his presence go ahead and pray if this is all you receive in this convention it was a wise bargain cry for a fresh passion to love you more than money to love you more than titles to love you more than career more than ambition someone pray you are talking to your maker take a minute or two to pray lord i desire to love you not just being a nominal christian a church goer for fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh passion for the study of the word fresh passion for spiritual understanding fresh passion for the house of God the things of God to the end that you be spiritually minded Someone is crying. Press round about. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, feel this place. Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Hallelujah. Now I want to make an altar call. You are in this place and once you heard me speak the spirit of god began to convict you that you need to make your way right with jesus no man condemns you but i call you in love to experience the mercy of jesus you cannot assume salvation no salvation in jesus christ only comes when you come willingly to declare his lordship over your life i'm going to count one to five I want you to leave your seat you need Jesus run and come and cry before the Lord on the altar here don't wait for anyone to be the first be the first to say apostle I need Jesus in my life I begin to count now don't wait for someone to come you are the first person and perhaps someone is saying I need to rededicate my life to make my ways right with Jesus I begin to count one let's celebrate them as they come Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? wanna be with you just wanna be with you king of glory king of glory fill this place just wanna be 
Jesus speaking about himself said I am the way I am the truth and I am the life he says no man come to the father except by me what does it mean to be saved number one it means to come declaring your inadequacy your inability to help yourself upon your strength for the bible says by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail it also says that our righteousness is as filthy rags but then the bible also declares the love of the father revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus here's what jesus said while he was speaking with nicodemus he said for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever that blessing is for whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved you may be saying apostle you don't know how i've lived my life you don't know how things are in my life today listen to me jesus is able to give you a new beginning right where you are gentleman it does not matter what you have done or what you have not done you can be like the prodigal son tonight as you get up and take that step the father is waiting jesus is waiting there is no other name under heaven the bible declares given unto men by which we must be saved there must be a renaissance of genuine salvation in the house of god genuine encounters with jesus the son of the living god an encounter with an angel does not translate to salvation an encounter with a preacher on his own does not translate to salvation except the preacher brings a message those of you who are in front here and together as a congregation can everyone talk to the lord in one minute i desire you truly i need thee oh i need thee every hour i need thee come bless me now my savior i come to you oh i need thee oh i need thee every hour I need thee, come bless me now, my Savior. I come to My brothers and sisters who are kneeling before the Lord, listen to me. Let me have your attention for one minute. My time is up. It is the noblest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. And for someone who is watching right now, here at the four square camp you're watching by way of television you're watching by way of internet distance is no barrier here is your chance to make jesus lord of your life genuinely truthfully void of pretense and void of falsehood for the bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away may i request for all of you who are kneeling in front thank you for your bold decision i salute your courage jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father may i please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and then please say this after me as loud and as clear as you can are you ready say lord jesus some of you are crying do not be ashamed of your tears you are before your maker there is nothing to be ashamed about he is your father the one who died for you say it again lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i desire rest in my life i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen keep those beautiful hands lifted and let me pray for you father in the name of jesus in the presence of your people i stretch my hands over these precious ones 
they have come declaring your lordship over their lives and by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and in the name of jesus the son of the living god i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god by the authority of scripture i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life and the grace to live a victorious christian life is imparted upon you this moment in jesus name we pray all right please all of you please stand please stand just a quick instruction may i request all of you together please move to my right there are a group of counselors who will be having a word with you let's honor them as they move just a moment and you'll be back to your seat give them a big god bless you give them a big god bless you hallelujah give them a big god bless you is that the best you can do let's encourage them as they go hallelujah and then on a final note let me declare over your life may your rest tonight be full of divine encounters may the lord send his angels to visit you and grant you secrets for your future in the name of jesus for those of you who are sick in your body you will wake up tomorrow and not find that infirmity again in the name of jesus christ i call you blessed and i declare that you are blessed and it remains so with you in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit amen and amen god bless you